So here we go. Wait, wait, that's not the one. This is the one. Hanner versus Incha. Game number one in the 10 monthly tournament finals of May. Both of these players so far have only got victories, I think. And they're here in week number four, playing a best of three about who will make it through to be the crowned the champion of the May monthly. On the left side, we got Pure Tanner bringing us the sixth airborne with Maverick. On the right side, we got Incha playing, uh, bringing us Raima Rapana. We're on the lovely, lovely CQC map of Zell. And if you want to join the monthly tournaments, the June one still has some spots open. You can find the info here. I think it does at least. <laughs> I got a message yesterday and that it might still have some open. So, yeah. If you want to join, you can find the link in the description. Other than that, keep your eye on open on the SDL Discord uh, and on the Bootcamp Discord. Robert usually is pretty active in keeping it posted there. Also running a Greenhorn version of it for newer players, so that where you don't run into Tan and Incha and Co. Or people like me, as I also played in this tournament. And I did pretty well. Last week game though was against Onward. The best player and uh, one of the best players in the game. As he was a finalist of the last league season. And he obviously kind of wiped the floor with me, but before that, pretty good results. And one win, two ties. So I was kind of proud of myself there. Though the, yeah, the owner results. Oh, I mean, in the second game, I gave him a fight, but well, it could have been a slight bit closer. In, <laughs> but yeah, it wasn't to be. Meanwhile, here, Tanner, in his first final in the tournament, Inch, I think, already won a monthly, like, Five months ago or so. Really good player. Uh, really scary player. Always annoying to play him in ranked for me. Uh, like one of the few players I uh, I just kind of uh, quit sometimes against. Because I just can't handle his un annoying amazing micro. Like stuff like the small 50mm mortar and so on. He is handling like an absolute champ. And yeah, Tanner more down to earth in the micro level but always coming in with a plan so let's see what the plan will be here like tanner it's not the controls that make him so scary his controls are good um don't get me wrong if he micros a unit he knows what he's doing but he doesn't quite have the speed and the multitasking of the incher but hey, you run into a plan that is just well made when you play against Tanner, so you have to have a good idea of how to destroy his division as well, otherwise you will just run into a brick wall and get your head or your hand bloody or whatever and just go down in flames. So let's see if Incha will have the same struggle or if Incha will be able to demolish Tanner's defenses here or Tanner's offense. Whatever the choice will be here. Six Air One, interesting division. Obviously, it's an airborne division. Dropped into Normandy. Didn't have too many heavy tanks around there. So you only get Tetrarch Little Johns and Centaurs early on. You get a couple of um, challengers. Not the Cold War challengers, the World War II challengers in the late game. It's not a 1 0 crossover division. Um, Tetrarchs coming in. Taka and Puya, double sniper on the other side. A lot of infantry. Including the Sissies, which are amazing long-range snipers that also have a 1000 meter uh, LMG. The only 1000 meter LMG in the game. Meanwhile, on the other side, the infantry of the 6 Airborne is pretty solid in CQC as well. Though, I feel like the ones of Rima Rapana might be better. The carries because they have the f finish Suomi, and the Suomi, the finish SMG is the best SMG in the game. It has 150 meter range, it has a great rate of fire and so on. And the classic 50 millimeter mortar already coming in down here in the south. The yeah, landings coming in. Lottie coming in as well. Petrock Little John trying to help out. Lottie pushing forward. Sniper rifles from the rear already shooting. Petrock and Little John doesn't have HE shots, only a Bessa to deal with infantry. 
600 coming in as well. Sand power though, that one has a 95mm HE cannon that can fire 2000 meters. So it's perfect for dealing with infantry like Tayam Puya. The small little mortars already becoming an oil. Sand tower here trying to shoot some units down here, but Lotti uses its smoke to lock that. Meanwhile, 81mm mortar trying to retaliate. As you can see, a lot of smoke usage here already. Carry pushing forward. 1311 for Incha. Air landing trying to hold the ground. AB Scots have a Brennan as well. Shooting from the rear. Air landing. 20 point unit. It's only 7 hit points. Has a Piat, but Piat's not the most important weapon against the finish. Air landing will get hit here. 80mm tries to hit the building over here. Well, it's the air landing in the rear here. Has to fight the carries and the sissies. And the British only have Bren, but Bren are still better than no LMGs. And that's exactly what the finish go than most of the infantry. Like most of the infantry, it looks like they are carries. So the LMGs of the British against the baseline infantry of the finish can actually be somewhat helpful. Though obviously on the long run range, long ranges they are outclassed by stuff like sissies. So you really have to pick your fights carefully on both sides here. Little John trying to hit the BA-10. Good micro there by Incha. Getting it out. Centaur around. Centaur gets bounced by the BA-10. Not sure if you really want to fight this with the Centaur on this range. Then the BA-10 has a chance of penetration, obviously. Will go down to HE damage as well eventually. Meanwhile, MS, the French little fighter up here, flying its rounds. MS 406. Could be used in a 1944 mod, maybe. A uh, 1940 mod. For the fall of French, uh, France. The Finnish Air Force overall, a nice hodgepodge of units from all nations. Somewhat similar to the Romanians, um, in that they just had French, German, American, British, and own designs. It's really cool to see all the stuff that was deployed there, and the Finnish used them pretty effectively. The Romanians also weren't too shabby, like... But the, the Finns especially used their Air Force pretty effectively throughout the war for what they had with it. Tetrak over here also only has the Bessa. But the Bessa is the best tank MG at least, so it is somewhat helpful. Meanwhile, this 50mm mortar already has put a lot of pain onto units of Tanner. Tries to do it again here. It's one of the 520m range ones. Airborne Paras though, now pushing through. The Lahertiunta, though, have a TNT, so one of these airborne paras will have a rough time. There we go. Six of them dropping dead. Pushing through now to try to hit the 50mm mortar. Tempest coming in. Will Tanner try to do air spam? 20mm AA already out with the pulse. 81mm trying to hit up here. The Vecultine AA of the finish is pretty capable. But it has short range. Like, it is not a super long range AA. And Tempest obviously are fast, so they are not the most ama uh, amazing AA against the uh, 6A1. 6A1 also having good off map and so on. We will see when we see that. So far it's a 12 12. Pretty close match when it comes to losses, I would say. No nothing major has been lost on either side. It's also down to both sides not really fielding anything that is like as flashy as a king tiger or so. Air landings here trying to beat the Lotti back. Also no kills on, of, on uh, Little John's also from the Lotties. The centaurs are both still alive and they are key here. As I said, um, I feel like the CQC capabilities are a bit better for Incha. So having a centaur that can help out with the uh, turning DHE fights into your favor is pretty nice. The Lotties here will get hit by the Centaur. Infant units up here would be nice. Piat's coming around. Okay, not sure what Piat is for. Huh? What is this Piat supposed to kill? There's like the only tanks or armored fighting vehicles that the Finnish got are the BA-10s and then one card of T-26s. 
so Piat might be a bit overkill. It's a <laughs> it should be interesting fights with Tedrocks versus T26s. Uh but and BA tens versus Tedrocks are also close ones. Tempest here really trying to be annoying with strafing runs as there's no AA around. None of the fighters of Inchas really has a chance against this. Tempest can disengage whenever it wants, can strike whenever it wants. Good run with the Tempest to pin down the engineers and make them surrender. One TNT satchel shots still hit one of the flamethrowers though. So the had the Yontas didn't go down without a fight. Tempest trying to come around for another run. 140 uni uh, points, so even a, uh, a couple of good strafing runs don't fully pay it off, but it's a bit annoying here for Incha, it, and it keeps fighters at bay, so it's really doing its job here, the Tempest, and as long as there's nothing else around, might not just use it as a strafer to help your infantry even more. Every HE damage here is welcome for the deck of Tanner, and also Tanner is someone who likes to use this his airplanes for strafing and, st and stuff like this, both in Warno and in Steel Division. His SU-25s, so if you don't have AA around, will make your day a bad one as well. Sissy Kev coming around here. Those are a bit more CQC oriented. They have Somis for... Like, like they have the highest amount of Somis of any French infantry before. The only unit that has more Somis is a Soviet one, with the Krupa Tsakhistiki in the 358. Lahat the Junta here getting surrendered. Don't think they killed anything this time with their TNT. Flamers and Canadian Paras helped out. They have the Willy Pete Molotovs. Centaur here disengaging as there's a bit too much AT around. And meanwhile, Sissy's pushing in in the south. Sissy's still on the effective front line. The first 40mm comes around. Oh, yeah, right. They have the bow force as well. Bought from the. Sweets, Vecatine 20mm coming in, double 20mm. Pretty effective as they actually deal the damage of two 20mm, unlike the Tripolstons or the. Um, the Flag Feeling, which both are a bit underwhelming in their damage output compared to the price and what you would expect. Like, you would expect a uh, uh, quadruple 20mm to be somewhat close to. Four times the damage of a 20 millimeter, but they're more like 2. Point, oh, like 2.1 or so, like not even 2.5 times the damage, which just doesn't make any sense. So I hope that's changed soon. I want Paras down here, engaging Centaur in a good spot. The Centaur is really being some keystones of Pure Tanner's strategy here, and they so far work out. Lati is now trying to kill Tetrak Little John. And they will be successful eventually if the little John doesn't retreat. TNT of the Centaur comes in, but Centaur is not a griller, so they don't just nuke things out of the distance. They do good damage, but it's not a I hit you and you're gone kind of thing. So the Lottis had time to get the kill. Lost two hit points, but will be able to disengage. 81mm mortars also around. I guess both to help out the infantry directly, but also keeping more little mortars down. Piat actually made it around deep behind enemy lines. Another Piat here, the ones we saw earlier, is trying to sneaky sneak around it through the cell map as well. 15 points for Piat, so they can be pretty cost efficient behind enemy lines. Most of the time, one tilt already works out. The Mosquito path, uh, uh, recon plane has to be careful. I'm not sure if they've changed it. Uh, it's supposed to have medium resilience. I remember it not having medium resilience though. Um, I think they changed it last patch. Uh, but I have to double check if that's still to come or if that already has happened. Everyone Paras and air landings versus the CCKF. It was a bug unit hit point wise so uh, even a light fighter like the MS-106 or the Musk uh, can be dangerous to them. So, good micro there by Tanner once more on the air. Getting the Mosquito out of there. I think they fixed this, yeah. Otherwise, this would have already killed the Mosquito. Like, they had, like, insanely low hit points. Evan Canadian Paras moving forward. AA being marked here by Tanner for future artillery hits. So, airplay for sure seems to be one of the 
cornerstones as well. Sand tower being forced back. A bit more infantry, I would wish to arrive here to really tank for the sand tower. Give the sand tower some eyes. And artillery counter battery now coming in from Incha. It, the 81 millimeter mortars from now on have to be careful when they show themselves and what they do afterwards. The Canadian Paras being pushed back over here. Tetrax trying to push onto the BA 10, get the kill. 50 millimeter. A T gun though coming up. Kaveri Swift Panzerfaust also scary. So the Tetrax have to be careful. 81 millimeter trying to hit. It's a really close fight. Both sides pretty careful with what they do. CMP Polston coming around. Air landing coming in as well. CSC Kev versus air landing over here. As I said, in fights like this, for example, the air landing now profit from the one LMG. And actually are the superior damage dealer, I think. Even though the though the city has SVTs, so it might not even be the case. Grand plus four Lee Enfields versus six SVTs. I'm actually not sure who has more damage output there. But in general the LMGs help out the British here in this fight, which usually ain't the case. Usually the British on long range are the ones with the inferior firepower, and they are the ones that want to get close. This time it's a bit different. Grumbles now come around, in B-Face you get a card of Grumbles. So, that's the heaviest tanks on the battlefield that we will see. And that's kind of funny, but... Because usually Grumbles are just there as light cavalry running around, but this time they're kind of big tanks. Because everything else is outdated at this point by at least four years, but they're only outdated by like one or two years. <laughs> he carries moving forward in here as well. Air landing coming in. Everyone Paras fighting sissies. Mosquito has to be careful. Lies a bit deep here. Vecatine gets the kill. Uh, is this medium resilience? I don't feel like it was. <laughs> yeah, like as I said, the Mosquito recon plane might still need to fix. Um, I'm not sure. Air landing, unloading. Maybe it was just good hits. As, as I said, the Vecatine is pretty cap uh, powerful, but I'm don't think it's that powerful. Glenheim coming in. We'll get a bombing run through as well. Tanner currently on the 1311 with timelet in place. Obviously that matters. Tempest here coming in for the Plenheim. And uh, that might be a dead Plenheim. As yes, the Tempest gets behind it and bye bye. Tempest also will get out of here. Petrarch in the center engages. Down south, air landings. And MG holding the lines on the other side, it's the sissies. Most action around here at the moment. A bit of action all the time around here as well. It's a 12-12. Drumbolts have to be careful. Yeah, two 50mm finish them both off. Only the sand tower alive. And that's why I wish there would have been infantry here from the get-go. Well, for longer at least. Also a couple of the 81mm mortars have been killed off, I think. Because then he would have spotted that earlier. Might even have been able to shoot at it with the infantry. Sand tower here hitting the BA-10. It needs a lot of hits from this, I think, to actually be able to achieve a kill there. It's now hitting the BA-10 again. BA-10 is bouncing. Air landing hit the 50mm. Sand tower needs to be careful. Is the sand tower careful? It doesn't look like it. Oh no, sand tower goes down. Sand tower in the south went down as well. Ugh, that's two important units down for Tanner here. Together with the Grumbles, actually four units basically down. We had 81mm off map coming in, but I don't know if it's really cost efficient up here. Yeah, no, I don't think it is. Like, even if it kills both of these units, 381mm mortar uh, off map doesn't do that cost efficiently. And you don't really have a follow up here as Tanner. On the other side, defensive setup in the south, really good for Insha. What's Incha's plan though? As obviously Tanner is the one taking da down the opponent a bit. So what's Incha's master plan? Did the Piats get a kill in the north? They got the kill on something here, yes. Piats over here, also in the forest. T26 might have the chance of meeting them. Gauntlet with off map from the other side. 
relatively cheap with 85 points. 358, uh, 81 military, not cheap at all. Well, actually gets some good hits there. Gets the BA-10 as well. Gets everything in there with the first couple of shots, nonetheless. So I'm kind of lucky there for Tanner with the salvo. Meanwhile, though, Planheim comes in. Tempest, nowhere to be seen. Gauntlet, still flying around in the rear. Six pounder goes down. Yet. Not close enough, it seems. Might want to have it a bit closer then, I guess. But these are T26s. Maybe it doesn't want to waste its shot on the T26s, but... Not sure if anything more of higher value than T26s will come by there, really. I mean, T26s are really cheap with 15 points, but they're also the only tanks that the enemy got. So killing them is pretty valuable, usually. We had 81 military mortar coming in, and this is a juicy area to get mortar uh, hit on. If that can be landed, I guess he might go for the AA. No, he goes for the south, and that's the right decision. I would have set it a bit further forward, maybe, but this might be juicy. Though a lot of units are currently pushing out of there. Uh, might not be perfect in the end, as it still obviously needs 20 seconds to call me in. Lehut the Junter coming in. Centaur being around. And 381 only has two salvos. Off map has been nerfed over the years in price and in amount. And that was one of those changes that everything above 200 millimeters only has two salvos instead of three. So this is the last salvo. So the payoff has to come now and the infantry has pushed too far forward at least gets the 81mm gets the sniper gets the leader the rest of the units won't get in there gets the mg there second leader ever so slightly survives gets killed off now though so i guess the off map paid off in the end with the first salvo being way more efficient than it looked at the first glance so got its value out but the infantry of Incha hasn't been stopped by it. And currently there's not that much behind here for Tanner to keep this under control. And the Elfman from the other side is coming in as well. Crumbles coming around. Linhaim coming in. Did he lose the Tempest? No, I don't think so. Could have reloaded by now. Could uh, have come in against for, for, for the Planheim, though the AA gets better and better. He had here not 100% in position. He had every go of the Tempest. One of the AA pieces here has been killed off by the AA landings, so that's a good one. As the Vecco team doesn't have the range to really hurt the Tempest, so the Tempest can come in for some strafing down here. Which might allow Tanner... Yes, gets the flag back here for now. 13-11. Keeps Incha on the... Uh, tick. Which is important. Mursik and... M200... Uh, MS406... Run away. Tempest comes around. Tempest nearly gets the kill on the Merzik. Tempest over here. Pretty low. Oh no. A bit far behind enemy lines. One Merzik goes down. Can Tempest get out? Or will the Vecco team actually snipe it? As Vecco team plus a 40mm bow force. And the Vecco team on 2 star retrancy. Wow, it's close. Tempest over here is still around though. Not another Tempest coming in. A couple of Polsons helping out from the rear. This Tempest actually might get behind it. It's close. Polsons not the most amazing 20 mils. As you can see, the damage output here is medium. But in the end, uh, air victory for Tanner. It was close, though. And Gauntlets fly another run in the north. One of them still has the off-map. The other one, I don't think so. I think one is already out. Not 100% sure. Maybe it has one more salvo. Tempest here, coming in. Ooh, this one flies deep. Uh, this one also has to be careful. Takes the fire, uh, the front of the fire away from this one, though. And the body mover here actually has been pinned down, so it doesn't help out. And the single Vecotine, then, isn't so dangerous. But Vecotine plus 40mm can be quite capable. And one military motor is really doing a good job there. Three pieces of Rara Panado trying to retaliate. Tempest up here in the north. 
struggling. And here the Bofors comes back in action. Are the Bofors still around? Oh, and it's not, and now it's falling back. It's pretty close to getting crit down here, though. One more good hit, and this might go down. It will get out for now, though. Tempest, speed plus medium resilience makes them some of the best planes for deep dives, uh, as they can survive some fire and also get out of the heat of battle pretty quickly. Grumble. Engaging onto Vecatines and Forts, I think it is. Or at least some the air landing. Okay, the air landing is the one that currently fights the battle with the Vecatine. Well, I would say the Crumbles would have a good chance. Air landings on this distance, not so much. Against the double 20 mil. Crumbles now tried to find the spot. T26 still around though. Dead trucks not coming up. And losing a lot of infantry here is Tanner. 14 10 though. Is good. But the off map in the north. Seems like it will allow Insha here for a big push, as there's nothing left up here for Tanner. The closest unit is an air landing around here. And Tanner's push over here, coming in. With the situation over here, a lot of air landings have gone down. Vecatine falls, T26 falls, so the Crumbles are still around. Infantry is needed, though. Infantry is needed. Crumble comes around as well. Rumble comes around as well, and Tanner keeps up the pressure. 14-10. Off map in the middle. Ooh, this looks like a good one. This looks like a good one coming in now. 13-11. Some units need come in here and stabilize the north though. These units can all just get behind the enemy lines. They can be quite capable. And Airwalk Paris will get hit. Crumbles coming in as well. Should retaliate here. More Paris will get up here. 358, uh, 81 millimeter mortar, the second one I guess. Coming in, the Crumbles over here. Bit on their own. Need to be careful where they go, obviously, because you don't want to run them into infantry. But they're also de deadly for any infantry that shows itself to them. And no big AT around. So this is a wild game. This is a really good game from both sides when it comes to finding their strengths. Uh, <laughs> Kiat has been killed off now. Incha reacting quickly, only losing one unit to this one as well. Tanner. Struggling in the north. Still in the lead here. And 50 minute time limit obviously is in there. So even if he starts to lose initiative here, he still can go into full bunker mode. If he has the forces for it. Tempest coming in in the south. Might get a good hit here. Yes, it does. Gets another kill. 20, T26 coming up. Rumbles sitting around the map. A lot of planehames coming in though. Planhames and Gauntlets. Planhames being pretty cheap for two 250 kilogram bombs. So that's their way in. They don't have good resilience, they don't have good speed, but good bomb, bomb load for a cheap price. And it, they don't have to get too close to the enemy. So AA still has a somewhat rough time shooting them down. More crumbles coming in for the north. And this northern situation is really the thorn in Tanner's side at the moment. As the rest is stabilizing, the two crumbles here kept units from moving too far forward. Has units around here again. I guess the 381 is the one we already saw. Thought the first one died in the, in the off map there. Or maybe he's just waiting for a better target. Crumbles here are pretty aggressive and in getting close to enemy infantry here. That doesn't work out, does it? Aha, uh -huh, the carry here pretty surely will get a kill. On a crumble of a Panzerfaust. The classic cell experience. Ooh, no. And the crumble actually might... Yeah, might... Spot them and... Seal its own faith. By... Triggering the return fire situation. Crumbles from over here now helping out. But the crumbles over here are overly aggressive. I'm not sure why he does that. It's not needed. I mean, he's at a 12-12. I'm not sure why the Crumble moved the way it moved. Really, the Crumble should help out as long-range fire support now. 
one more crumble over here has fallen behind enemy lines. Nearly got a bow force here, it seems. Bow force pretty low. Still had fights the other crumble. Doesn't get the final shot off though. Killing off the bow force here in the middle obviously would be huge. As there won't be too many bow force around anymore, and that would allow Tanner to be more aggressive with the fighters. As we are now in C phase, both sides are playing a really low income game as well. So allowing the Tempest to run rampage on this map here would be big. Incha pushing with Ratsuveki onto the crumble. Crumble trying to disengage. AB Paras holding the ground. Gets the kill here, by the way, on the 40mm AA. Only in the north we still have AA for now. So the south is fully open for Tanner to abuse of air stuff. The stuff. But the north at the same time is somewhat collapsing here on him. Avon Paras trying to come in. Crumble in a rough position. Sissy Kev and Ratsuveki moving forward. The flag over here in trouble as well. Evan Paras versus Ratsuveki. Rumble. Another one close to biting the dust. I feel like it will does do that now. Huh? Survive this shot, but this one might be the last one. Yes. Goes down, and that means in the south there's only one real infantry unit here. Tempests really need it. Tempests are called in now, but can they keep this at bay? Uh, get a bit of damage in here. He carries heavily strafed down as well. But, oh no, two fighters. Oh, Tempest, no. Too late with the micro here. Loses one Tempest. Good mi air micro there by Incha. Another Tempest coming in. The Bofors here also all have fallen. So the air fight here is not as great as it once was the, for Tanner either when it comes to getting support from the ground. And that's the issue with Tempests now. Fighters with better agility. Yes, you can run away all the time. And yes, you can hunt down bombers. But unlike a G55, you can't easily win a dogfight. And he kind of needs the Tempest right now on the ground. So even only being kept away here is a problem for Tanner. Not trying to hunt them down, but... Yes, you have 680 kmh, but the 5.5 should be enough to just get them in, sa into safety. Because the turn took too long. Oh no, Vecatine coming around. Tanner getting a bit desperate here. Getting a kill. Needs to get the hell out of here though. As the second Vecatine, I'm surprised it didn't unload already. Oh no, oh no. Tempest needs to move. Okay, good move there. Okay, we'll get another air kill. We'll get another air kill. Though overall good trade here so far by Incha. Killing one Tempest for an MS-406. Tempest's obviously the most exp mo expensive fighter out there. MS-406 not so much. Air landing also getting killed off. And as I said, Tanner kinda needs the air superiority now in the south. The Polstons are around here actually. They actually didn't die. He just repositioned them. Uh, but infantry is needed. We have one Peros coming up in the north. Some of them coming in as well. The Cromwells up here have fallen, which is painful. Cromwells in the center and Tedrox in the center have fallen as well. The infantry fight's going better for Incha here. And that's really where Incha is also really strong. Infantry fights, retreating and giving them support with stuff like mortars. Off-map positioning also pretty good. Lenheim trying to come in time and again. And they actually get the bombs off. There's even four Polstons in, in good enough here. Plan him on the fire. Polstons, as I said, really not the best 20mm AA out there. Gauntlet trying to come in again. Incha on the 59. And Tanner in some trouble here. The Tempest strafers were needed. Evan Paras engaging over here. And all the armor that worked so well for Tanner has been killed off over the time. And Incha really worked well on that. So the infantry just can't keep up the 1v1 and Incha is up to a 17-7 here. And Tanner is on the ropes, it seems like. 
more airborne paras coming in. Air landing under heavy fire, and it seems like Incha might take game number one here. It was a good back and forth. Um, it was, for a long while, I would say it was a super even game, but Incha was that slight bit more cost efficient in all the fights, never running the infantry into too much of a suicidal action. It's, it's Incha, and gets the victory here on Cell. 3,300 kills and 2,080 in the end. But that only got that big in the end, I'm pretty sure. Like, I, if you see the chronology, yeah, there has been stuff killed, but the other way around it also happened. By quite a bit, you can see here. A couple of blue units dying, a couple of red units dying. So, I guess... Incha just played that slightly better game. Really dealing with the threats that, like the crum uh, the crumble, like the centaur, pretty well. Kept the air force of the six airborne at bay as well with solid AA positioning and stuff. Tried to counter battery and so on, and just had micro all across the map. So GGVP here to Incha in game number one, and I hope to see you all in game number two. Till then.